This might be a controversial opinion for some people and I might get crapped on for saying this, but you know what? I don't really care at this point. I'm just gonna go for it. The 2020 NASCAR Talaga Fall Weekend was a complete bust. I said it. Why? Well, stay tuned. What is going on, E-Nation fans? This is the Impress 48 here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics. And today we're gonna be talking about the 2020 NASCAR Talaga Fall Weekend. And I'm not just gonna be talking about the Cup Series only because of the mess, I will get to that later, however. So where do we begin? Let's start off with the Truck Series. The Truck Series, it was a decent race. It was a, it was a nice race. It's a typical Talladega race, but I believe Daytona was completely better. Um, unfortunately, Sheldon Creed caused the wreck, I believe. I mean, like, he, I know he didn't mean to cause a wreck. He was trying to, like, stay in his own position, but went to a different lane, but shoved into someone else, shoved someone out of the way. And I believe everybody checked up, and then everybody started wrecking in turn three. Unfortunately, Dawson Cram, uh, who is the youngest NASCAR team owner of all time at the moment, got in it. Joe Nemechek, Zane Smith. Boy, there's a lot, there were a lot of good uh, trucks involved. But yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. And then, I guess, I don't remember too much, but I guess like everything else, which is typical Todd Liga. My personal favorite moment of the race was the, the long green flag runs during the final stage. Like, um, Jennifer Joka, Brian Dowell's at top two when everybody was pitting and everybody was staying out. That kind of strategy. Honestly, that was my personal favorite part. And then when the rest of the field was catching up to them and they, they managed to catch up with them. And then Sheldon Creed lost the tire and then the caution came out for debris. But I don't, I may be wrong, but I don't think they showed it. Um... And then here we get to the uh, final laps of the race. The race started two to go. Everything was going fine. Just hard racing to get the win at Talladega. You know the deal. White flag. Trevor Baines coming. Stuart Friesen's coming. Rafael Lassard's coming. Everybody trying to go for the win. And unfortunately, um, big crash happened at turn three. Stuart Friesen got in it. Austin Hill. He was on fire. Crash happened. And then... The caution was called. Yeah. And I don't I don't hate that fire Lassard. It's awesome that that uh, he won truck race. That's cool. That's cool. However, I'm sure if you're me, I'm sure everybody was rooting for Trevor Bain to get the win at Talladega. Honestly. <laughs> I was rooting for Trevor Bain, honestly, because ever since he got back to NASCAR and trucks he is, he is staying for the remainder of the year. He's been doing well. Rough starts and then got DNQ'd at, not DNQ'd, disqualified at Bristol. <laughs> he was doing good. He's been keeping his truck clean and that's awesome. Also, see Trevor back at NASCAR. Unfortunately, he finished second. So what's the problem there? Uh, my problem was that they threw out the yellow in turn three. What's the problem? I did say that, but I mean, like, they were literally in turn three. Like, we were about to finish the race and all that stuff. And then, yeah, the caution was called because the Austin Hill was on fire and all that shit. Oh, wow. I, I get it. Anything about safety. But during the caution on the last lap, it's a huge turnoff. But if it's in turn three, almost in turn four, when you're so close to finish the damn race, that's what gets annoying. That's what, that's, that's what turned a lot of people out. That's what turned me off as well. Like, I, I know they want the driver safe and all that stuff, but literally Austin Hill was on fire outside of the racing surface, but yet they managed to throw out the caution regardless, which I understand, but they were in turn three and four. They could have just raced back to line. And then everybody was like, oh, like complaining about like how it was finished. Like, oh, everybody thought Jared Bain won under yellow but i don't get this shit like i mean if austin hill was on fire turn one and two i can kind of understand that <clears throat> but they were in turn three and four 
yeah, I know, like, they need, like, emergency people and all this stuff, I understand, but they were almost done. Seriously. If you guys, if they can manage to let the Xfinity race in 2016, uh, they told July race, they can just, they were literally almost done and they threw out the yellow last minute. That's what this is pretty much about, but they were in turn three and four. When the caution was called, I don't know, it's NASCAR. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do anything right. Whatever. The truck race itself it was decent. It was nice. Um. And then the Xfinity race at Talladega. The Xfinity series only raced there at Talladega on Saturday because of the pandemic, and they wanted to make up some races, which I can understand. And honestly, the whole entire race was just mediocre. Not not good. Not the greatest. I don't know if it's the worst. I don't know what happened. It was like if I don't know. I guess they were okay, but I don't I don't know. It wasn't really that great or whatever. Um And then fucking Ross Chastain, man. Like I guess uh someone got into the back of Ross and then Kobe freaking Howard. Kobe Howard got into Ross. I I get it. From a driver's perspective, it's hard to make a decision the last second. However, like, come on. At least Ross Chastain finished on lead lap and finished top 10. I'll, I can't be too mad about that. And then we had a crash, like going to pit road with Austin Hill again. Jesus Christ, it's been a bad day for him. Austin Sindrick. I believe with no chase, he lost some points. I'm not gonna go by the chase format. Fuck the chase format. The elimination chase format. Fuck that. Um, and Jeffrey Arnhart, he was so close to Bobby Labonte to save, but unfortunately he did hit the wall, the inside wall. Oh yeah, Riley Herbs continues to suck. <clears throat> so yeah. <clears throat> and then freaking Ryan Vargas. Like I love Ryan Vargas. He has an awesome personality. However, his debris, uh, his uh, back bumper got yellow. Honestly, no disrespect to Ryan Vargas, but that's what you get for driving a TikTok car. TikTok is garbage. It should have been banned. I know there's some good TikTok stuff, but the bad ones, the cringy ones, and the offensive ones are just, they, it just ruined the whole platform. Um, so yeah, that's what you get for running the worst, one of the worst social media platforms ever. Yeah, I don't care. Hate on me. TikTok's garbage. Hate on me. I don't care. Um, and then um, coming into the closing laps, it was a battle between Chase Briscoe and Noah Gregson. Everybody, although there, although it was like a two-lane race, um, no, Noah Gregson almost kept kept breaking Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe made an awesome save. He managed to save his car, still get to lead, and also. Still got the lead on the inside of that and saved it. How about that, Chase Briscoe? Can't see you in Cup. I can't wait to see him in Cup soon. And then the next lap, Graxon put Briscoe on the wall. Oh, yeah. And Justin Haley. Although he's the luckiest driver in NASCAR. He manages, he manages to be at the right place at the right time. Like two or three laps to go. And then the white flag. Same deal as the truck series crash happened. Yellow was out. And Justin Haley won the race. So, he, yeah. They threw out the yellow again and turned three on the last lap. Only in NASCAR, folks. And finally, the cup race. You know, to be honest, the race would have been great if it wasn't for the caution fests and the wreck fests. Some of you guys don't know. I know there's some that know. When it, if it's a wreckfest race, it's a huge turnoff for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. The racing was fine. It was good. The package is great. Don't get me wrong. The race was fantastic. However, it it got ruined by the caution fests, the wreckfests, and the controversy up the finish. I don't care what call they made about, oh, 
who did this and who did that, who won this race, who got the penalty, who did this and that, regardless, no matter if no matter if there is a good call or a bad call about who did what on the double yellow line, everybody agrees that the double yellow line should be abolished. It's so pathetic. When it comes to Daytona and Talladega races, there are a couple of things I have to worry about. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and the double yellow line. And it's pathetic that 19 years, 19 years, we still have the stupid rule. It has done worse than better for 19 years. The racing has gotten more bloodthirsty even before the double yellow line. Without the double yellow line, before 2001, everything was fine. Like, yeah, yeah, some drivers did bonehead moves, but it wasn't as bad. Now, I don't think anybody really got hurt. I don't remember, but ever since we got the double yellow line rule, it's done worse. It's, it's, it's done more chaos. Not because of the calls, but like the crashes, drivers making like risky moves. Sometimes it wasn't worth it. Other times it was, but seriously. The worst part about the W line rule is the, in the inconsistency. I despise inconsistency in motorsports and controversy, controversy as well. It is so pathetic. It pisses me off so much. And Sunday, <laughs> it's so pathetic, man. How pathetic do you have to like keep making these Random calls like, oh, this driver got penalized. He should be finished the last car to the left. Or, oh, Chase Elliott, he did nothing wrong. He's in the top five. But Chris Buescher did something wrong. So he's with Matthew Ben did all that crap. Oh, but Denny Hamlin did not do anything wrong. I don't hate Denny Hamlin, but, yeah. I don't know. I know. You shouldn't avoid Rick and all this stuff. Well, so did Carl Edwards in 2006, but otherwise the shooter. And guess what? It's pathetic. That's inconsistency right there. The whole finish was nothing but inconsistency. It's pathetic, bro. I wasted four and a half or almost five hours watching that race. Is this what really NASCAR wants to be? Even without Brian France, nothing but a bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty, survival kind of race really that's what people are into that's what people are into are you kidding and to be honest like i thought about this like i don't know after the race like i er everybody knows the 2009 talladega spring race uh carl edwards bracket last thing because i didn't want to go at the bottom or to the 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 yellow line and then carl did the wrong thing the rest is history but here's what nobody thought about, except me, the other day. Um, Ryan Newman, the 2020 Daytona 500. Honestly, I feel like that happened because of the, the double yellow line rule. Not just because he was trying to defend his position to win the race, but nobody could make a move at the, at the bottom because of the double yellow line rule. And because of that, look what happened. Seriously, someone... Like, Ryan Newman could get seriously hurt if we still have this double yellow line rule. It's... NASCAR's done more damage than make anything better with this rule. Someone could get extremely hurt again. I don't think you can die in NASCAR from a crash nowadays because of how safety has come along. But NASCAR always takes action when someone gets hurt. And that goes to any other motorsports. I'm not going to defend IndyCar, Formula 1, and other motorsports series with that. Because everybody does that. They take action after someone gets seriously hurt or dies. And it's just pathetic that we still have this. Like, every year when it comes to Daytona and Talladega, I have to worry about... Are we gonna have controversial moments? Because I hate controversy. It's stupid. It just ruins the race. It just, it just wastes. It just wastes your day or whatever and all that stuff. It's just sad. 
So why do I think the, the whole Talladega weekend was a bust? Yeah, because of some controversial calls they made. Uh, the truck race Xfinity race. Um, throwing the yellow and the white flag. Oh, they were in turn three. And then the cup race, the yellow line. Oh yeah, controversy. So basically, the Talladega weekend was a bust because it was a controversial weekend. Because NASCAR kept, keeps making controversial decisions. So yeah, if you guys disagree, that's fine by me. Feel free to tell me how you feel about this weekend in the comments below. That's fine. But don't be bashful because I've already had enough of NASCAR fans, the entire NASCAR fan base being bashful to me for no reason. So yeah, please, please, for the life of me, please, have a respectful opinion or debate in the comments section. Please, I love me a respectful debate. It's nice. Please do that for me and I'll be happy. So yeah, that was a waste of a weekend of a Taldega. <sighs> At least Calig Racing won, Justin Haley won, so Calig gang. Bubba Wallace had a great race, so the haters can suck it. They can, <laughs> they can, then go suck a fat one and cry like a bunch of pussy ass bitches. Because Bubba's actually a great driver. Not great, but good. He was a contender at that race. Although, although he crashed out, um, he still had a good race. Um, but too bad. The NASCAR fan base, some, are still going to hate on Bubba for no reason because, yeah. Because the NASCAR fan base sucks. Fuck the NASCAR fan base. <sighs> Thank God this Tyler like weekend's over. I, I just hope to God that Charlotte Robo is not a controversial weekend. It's stupid. Like, we've already had these enough gimmicks, fake drama entertainment for controversy. I don't need that crap in the Robo. Please. Please. Oh yeah, but it's a it's a cutoff race for the chase, the elimination chase. I forgot. Expect for more fake drama, entertainment, fake entertainment, and more stupid gimmicks. And maybe inconsistency. Who knows? It's NASCAR. So yeah, that's just my personal opinion about this past weekend. If I get hate, whatever. I don't care. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, that's gonna do for today's video. I I know I've been late. Or slacking uh, from the racing topics of Ian Perez series. I'll do my best to do more. So, yeah. That'll do it for today's video. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. <clears throat> Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts. Instagram, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to burp. Instagram, I'm Ian Perez 25 and Ian Perez 40 and SYT. Like my Facebook page, Ian Asker 40 E Nation Films. Don't forget to follow me on Reddit. You slash Impress48. Thank you all for supporting E Nation. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.